kind of um, slept really nicely. How could I not? Um, and woke up to the birds singing outside and the sunrise. Um, thanks to my alarm, otherwise I would have just slept right through. But I really don't want to get up, but I have a mess to figure out. And I really have to get on the trail before the sun gets up too high, so... Unfortunately, as much as I would love to stay here and just lay here for a bit, I can't. I have to get up. So, here we go. Alright, well, so much for getting out early. Um, all the laundry that I did yesterday and hung out to dry, it's all still soaking wet. Everything from my socks to my underwear and my pants and everything. So it's not even like I can just hang parts of it off my uh, off my pack and let it dry while I walk. Like it's just a hopeless case. So um, yeah, we'll see what time I get out of here. <laughs> All right, this uh, waiting for my clothes to dry is kind of like, well, waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> so lesson learned, always make sure to leave one dry set of clothing. Yeah, I mean, I guess the alternative would be to uh, just hike in this dress, but you know what, that that just ain't happening. <laughs> Plus, my underwear is all, dry, all wet still, so I'm not going commando. <laughs> not happening. Oh uh, boy, so... I'm just sitting and waiting for paint to dry. Hmm. Where did I get the idea that wool was going to be quick to dry? Yeah, not so much. All right, so it's a little bit after 10 and um, my clothes are still not dry. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the driest ones in the mesh bag, mesh pocket on my pack. Hopefully they'll continue to dry a little bit in there, but there's a lot of them to stuff in there, so we'll see. And then the wetter clothes I'm going to wear. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna be, the, that is gonna be refreshing, <laughs> right? Especially the um, sports bra, which is still quite wet. I should have been gone a couple of hours ago already but um but that just didn't happen thanks to this paint drying exercise <sighs> but uh hopefully i'll be on my way soon all right so it's almost 10 30 and i should have been long gone by now and uh my clothes are still more wet ish than they are dry ish so what's the worst that can happen if anything they're just gonna get wet with sweat <laughs> very soon so finally set to go it's uh after 11, quarter past 11 maybe, and uh, my stuff obviously still not dry, but it dried a little bit actually on, on me from my body heat. And uh, the sun is quite high, it's crazy hot, leaving at the worst possible time, but uh, hopefully it'll all be okay. Oh, crap, <laughs> I forgot to lock the door. Now I have to get all the way up those stairs again, either all the way up the stairs or with the pack or leave the pack down here. Um, I think I choose to leave the pack down here. All right, the door is locked and I can finally get this show on the road. I've made it a little ways down the street. Just wanted to show you where we are. This is a little kibbutz called Mayan Baruch. Uh, I don't know what Mayan means, but something blessed. And today I have to hike about another six kilometers to get to Tel Hai which is where my friend will meet me tonight. So this is going to be mostly uphill today. I haven't gone very far yet and I can certainly feel it. I'm so glad I did those first nine kilometers yesterday rather than have to be doing this after, after already doing nine kilometers in the heat of the day. That would have been terrible. Um, so my Jan Baruch is behind me and Jewel's orchards for you. I don't know what kind of orchards those are. I'm guessing maybe olives or something. I don't know. Wow. 
I just climbed about, I don't know, 20 meters, 30 meters out of a deep dry wadi and that was torture. I am so glad that I finally managed to figure out how to pack my food into my pack and uh, get my hands free to use these guys because without them I don't think I would have made it. So back there, that's my Anbaru. Back behind it you can see those hills and I don't know if you can see it for the haze but somewhere back there is Mount Helmon which is where I climbed halfway down from that first day the other day. And uh, I'm just glad I didn't climb the rest of the way yesterday. I made a good decision for once in taking the bus to Dan. And now I'm officially on the Schmiel. Here's another orchard just after that wadi that I climbed out of. It's another orchard. I don't know my fruit plants that well. This is something different. I'm actually able to, the road goes right through this orchard. So I'm actually get, able to get right close to it. I don't know what these are. Um, I don't know, maybe you do, but I have no idea. So there you go, orchards everywhere. Jules, this is for you. I don't know what that is, if it's some kind of insect repellent or something, you might know. Um, maybe some kind of natural insect repellent. I, don't, I really don't know. So I decided to take a break in the uh, last trees of the orchard in the shade because I don't know where I'm going to get shade next and I've just finished walking maybe about a kilometer of the actual trail but I had to walk about a kilometer first just to get to the gates where it joins with the um, where the Schwil continues. So I've already walked probably about two kilometers um, one of it official Schwil, and I'm dripping with sweat. I thought I had plenty of water because I'm only doing part of the trail today, but uh, now I'm thinking I probably don't. And there is a landmark just ahead. I just saw a truck drive by so I can check from the Red Book and figure out exactly where I am and how far I have to go. And the only problem is the uh, the Red Book isn't really helpful in telling where there's going to be shade and things like that. So, um, yeah. So while I was sitting here on the side of the little dirt road through the orchard, I noticed, oh, okay, I know. Well, I noticed over there, I don't know if you can see that, but behind the tree, before the wind started, breeze picked up, you could see the uh, trail marker. Um, so I wasn't quite sure if I'm supposed to be walking on this roadway or on the other side of the trees, if there's some kind of a trail over there. But there's another Schwiel marker over there, right on the side of the road. So, and a fence actually. So I guess I'm okay. And uh, looking at the map, the, the most of the rest of the way into Tel Hai looks to be road walking, which I'm not so, so sure I'm fond of, but, and especially since that just confirms that there's no shade for some ways. So I'm just gonna sit here and uh, take a break for a little bit. Okay, so this uh, heat is clearly messing with my head. I thought I had to do 15 kilometers today, but actually it turns out I only have to do 13 and somehow I'm still sitting in that very same, uh, under that very same, I think it's actually an almond tree because um, I'm sitting on a mound of almonds, uh, almond shells, um, what I think are almond shells anyways. Um, and I just took a closer look at the instructions and either I don't know how to add or I've just done about 2.8 kilometers of the actual official Schwil already today. And um, that means 
that means according to this, hang on, what do I have left? Um, according to that, I'm at 11.7 and I have 13 kilometers left, which means I have just over a kilometer left, which that's kind of crazy. But if that's true, um, it can't be true. It can't be true. Looking at the map, it can't be true because I'm only close to Yuval. I still have to get to Kfagiladi. I don't know. But anyways, once I get to Tel Hai, I still have to walk a ways to off trail to get to the youth hostel. Life lesson, I don't know how many. If it uh, looks too good to be true, it probably is. Um, Honestly, I want to throw the red book and the maps and the directions and everything in the garbage and I want to strangle whoever marks the markers <sighs> because I just spent an hour of the hottest time of the day pacing back and forth the same 200 meters because I thought I was on Route 90 but I wasn't and um, trying to get trying to get down onto the highway and I couldn't because there was no way and there were no markers obviously there were no markers because I was lost off the trail but there was no markers up above to tell me where to turn to keep on the trail um probably I got a little too excited once I read those directions and I just didn't think straight. So learn from that. Don't let your emotions get, get uh, the better of you because you could end up in real trouble. So I'm gonna sit here in the shade. I am on the right track now. I am on the Schwil, but I wasted a huge amount of time in the heat and a huge amount of my precious water that I now actually need a lot more of than I thought because I'm actually not close to Tal Hai. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm going to eat some snacks and uh, just chill for a bit. Jules, just for you, I'm sitting in an olive grove, olive under an olive tree in an olive orchard. So there's olives. This is that second break I was taking. I still have chocolate all over my face. Uh, that second break that I took after I got lost and cursed myself to high heaven about 50 million times over an hour. So I still have more than two kilometers to go to get to Tel Hai and then probably another kilometer or so to find the youth hostel. and. That's quite a disappointment after thinking that I was almost there. So, oh well, I guess that's life. You have to pick yourself up and move on. Well, finally some shade and some beautiful flowers. I've made it to Kfar Gilati. And uh, this is a cemetery of some sort, it looks like. And there's a monument here to Josef Trumpeldor who's a big Jewish hero um, over there behind the flag. It's a lion. And honestly, if I had more energy to tell you about him, I would look something up to tell you about him. But all I remember was something about he um, lost his arm in some battle. Then he fought in the World War I and got wounded again, and then got killed in some other battle. And his famous last words were, it's good to die for one's country. So that's about all I got on Josef Trumpeldor. But this is his monument. I need to take a bit of a break. I see some Hikers over there. Maybe I'll go over and say hi. I think I, they passed me along the way while I was taking another break. So, um, oh, why am I going up the steps? 
after I just climbed from I don't know where down there. Um, so anyways, and then I have a little ways still to go to Tel High, um, maybe about a kilometer. I have to dump my stuff, get to a bank and a grocery store, and get to bed because I don't know how I'm going to do 23, 21, 23 kilometers tomorrow. No idea. But there it is. I'm too close. There it is. The uh, monument to Trumpeldor. Wow, what a day. What a crazy day. And I gotta tell you, if I had started this morning in Dan, I would not have made it. No way. No way, no how. Um, so I kind of got organized at the end there and a, um, a couple of hikers passed me and I followed them for a little ways. They were going a little bit faster than me and then I lost them eventually. Um, but then I ran into them again at that Trumpledore um, monument. That's who, that's the guys who I went to up to talk to. And it turns out they're a father-daughter team and they're journalists writing an article for the newspaper about their hike together before she goes off to do her military service. So we had a really nice meeting and getting to know each other and um, he remarked on my camera, which you can't really miss, and uh, said that I shouldn't be bringing my camera, as have so many others. After a discussion for a little bit, he basically said, no, you should bring the camera. <laughs> when he found out what my other options were. So he was like, yeah, no, you should bring the camera. So I had already sort of started second guessing myself about the camera, but um, well, in any case, I have it with me now for a little while, so I have no choice. But um, at least I, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what I decide. But for now I have it with me and um, and at least I had somebody, somebody backing me up about the camera, understanding why I'm bringing it. So anyways, they, they were really lovely people and um, I hope to run into them again on the spiel, although they're on a bit of a tighter timeline than I am, so I probably won't see them again. But I ran into a trio of young people as well who showed up just as we were kind of wrapping up. And on my way down to the youth hostel, I ran into a couple of guys as well. So, um, and these guys, these people, the, all these other people that I ran into, they started at Dan, at uh, Kibbutz Dan this morning. And I don't know how they made it. Um, I'm just so happy that I started in my Baru and only had to do those whatever it was, four kilometers, because even those seemed like a nightmare and an eternity. But tomorrow's going to be even worse. It's about 21 kilometers, I think. And it's like crazy uphill. Lots of uphill and lots of downhill. Um, I'll have my friend with me. I'm this, at the youth hostel right now. This is the room at the youth hostel. And... Um, waiting for her to join me later tonight and we're gonna have to get going really super early tomorrow so that we can do mo a lot of the climbing in the cooler morning unlike what I did today. <laughs> so I have to put those clothes that were still wet um, up to dry and hopefully I'll have a dry set of clothes to wear tomorrow. Oh yeah and the other thing I did today was I did my very first Okay, this is too much info for some of you, sorry. Um, my very first squat pee without actually taking my pack off because I just had to go that bad. So yeah, anyways, done. <laughs> had a lot of firsts today and um, we're gonna see. The, the two um, father-daughter pair, the father was very insistent about how dangerous it is out in the desert and to be very careful and so on and so forth and yes absolutely i agree with him and from my experiences the last couple days you cannot underestimate um how difficult it can be 
and what the effects of the heat and the sun and dehydration can be on you. Just had an amazing dinner down in the dining room. Um, I decided to splurge on an extra because I just need to eat well when I can. Um, so decided to make a good, ex a good decision and um, splurge on the 78 shekels or whatever it was to, uh, to get the hostel dinner and it was definitely worth it. Um, I don't know when I'll get my next real meal at all, so just so worth it. Um, waiting for my friend to show up from Haifa and um, I think we're gonna have to chat about what we're gonna do tomorrow because um, I don't know I'm just thinking that this is maybe maybe one of those places where it's necessary to make good decisions so well it's always necessary to make good decisions but um, yeah that's becoming a theme along this trail is good decisions not bad decisions um, anyways, so that's where we're at right now. Oh yeah, and uh, one thing that was invaluable to me was the, um, the father and daughter team. I have the app, the INT app on my phone, but I just haven't had time to sit down and figure out how it works. Now that I'm in Israel back home, it wouldn't even work, so there was no point. So now that I'm in Israel, I've been hoping to run into somebody who could show me how it works. They were so helpful in getting me on that and getting that working on my phone. It's going to be a lifesaver. I can see exactly where I am. It works on GPS. Um, not at all like the Red Book maps and directions. Uh, this is going to be so helpful. Um, I can't wait to actually use it tomorrow. So um, I'll let you know what I think, but I already love it. Like, I already love it. It would have saved me so much heartache over the last couple of days if I had been using that. Okay, so my uh, friend is here and she's sleeping in the other room. We've had to discuss our options for tomorrow and make some decisions about what we're gonna do. And there's been some changes to the plans, but I'll tell you about those tomorrow. I just had to come out and wish you guys a Lila Tov.